President Trump's first 100 days nearly over. It is day 88 right now. Markets are posting gains since Inauguration Day, as you know. Investors are betting on the administration's policy ideas uh, moving growth. But what happens next, especially as more geopolitical risks come to the forefront? Joining us right now to talk more about it is Paul Christopher, Wells Fargo Investment Institute head, global market strategist. Good to see you, Paul. Thanks so much for joining Good us. Good morning, Maria. So Thank we you. know that the markets are waiting on tax reform, and we know now where we stand. The president said he has to do health care first and then move on to tax Tax reform. Do you think that there is a threat to these markets that nothing gets done in 2017, and what will that mean for the market? I think the markets are already starting to discount the probability that nothing will get done in 17. But if they begin to see by August the, the forms, the contours of a tax deal come into place, markets could begin discounting in the second half of this year. So you think then that the markets? How do you, how, what kind of a year are you expecting then? Well, what we're prices. looking for, yeah, I mean, we still have to see what those details are going to look like, and we, we have to see what the complication will be with, with health care reform coming first, and that's where the markets are right now, sort of struggling to stay uh, at the level they've been at. And, and so we are looking for the markets to come back down to our year-end target, 2230 to 2330. We're in that neighborhood right now. It's a great opportunity for investors to start rebalancing, taking some profits here, but we are looking for some future discounting, again, once and especially if those p plans for corporate taxes fall into place right, later in the year. So, Kevin Kelly, what Paul's saying is he, he's expecting the market to trade down before it trades up again. Yeah, and I think that's an important note to take because we haven't seen a 5% correction since the end of June last year, which is pretty significant that we keep having this rise up. But what you need to focus on is what sectors are working and what sectors are not working. We've seen technology rise over the last quarter, and it was the leader. And one of the reasons why is because it's growing top line revenue as well as bottom line revenue. So, you're expecting expecting around 14% rise um, in technology. And so we'll see that come out next week. And they're seeing a growing market share of ad spend when you look at Facebook, Microsoft, when you look at Google. Uh, my question to Paul is, what sectors are you advising your clients to go to? Because there are worrisome pockets. I mean, we look at the yield curve. We see what's ha hap happening in the fixed income market. Are there places that your clients can seek refuge in this market? We still like the, uh, the cyclical sector. So in uh, industrials, we like consumer discretionary. We really like financials here, and we think the yield curve will get a little bit steeper. Uh, the yields have come back down on this, some of this disappointment, but we are looking for just one more Fed rate hike and some additional upside in the long end of the curve. So with the solid economy and yield curve steepening, we still like financials here. Uh, Paul, it's Heather Zumaraga. Other than the yield curve steepening, um, what do you see helping to prop the, prop the financial up. They've sustained, you know, new highs back to their highs that we haven't seen since 2008. Um, most of the big banks and loan growth seems to be slowing a little bit. Could the run be or this rally since the Trump election be running out of steam and the financials? And, and do we need participation from other sectors? You, you, you are seeing some of the expectations come down and become a little bit more moderate. That's to be expected. We've been looking that for, a, for that for a long while. But we're also seeing some encouraging trends in consumer finance where consumers appear to have stopped deleveraging and they're ready to start taking on a little bit more debt now. We think corporations also have been loath to use the banks. They've been using a lot of the long-term debt. We think corporations will turn more to the financial sector. And with the solid economy, we are expecting more fundamentally driven strength for financial. Paul, we're seeing very high consumer confidence right now, but that doesn't seem to be translating into consumer spending. Where do you see that going? What's the paradox there? Yeah, the paradox is still that you've got the people with some uh, maybe some unrealistic expectations for how quickly and how much the administration and Congress could get done, and maybe some folks who thought the economy was a little bit stronger than it really is. But we think that, that will, those expectations will come back down to reality, and we'll, we'll start to see a more solid second, third, and fourth quarter. Don't forget, the first quarter having been weak, just as it's been the last several years, is affecting some of the numbers that we're seeing right now, some of the hard data. So what are you telling clients right now, Paul? Well, what we're telling them really is that we still got looking ahead beyond the end of this year. We still got a, an upward trajectory to this market, a solid economy. We think consumers will continue to take on more debt. Corporations will as well. And we want people to be invested in stocks. But with markets at these levels, again, as I said before, it's a great time to take some profits and look for values. All right. We'll be watching. Thanks very much, Paul. Good to Thank see you. Thank you. Paul Christopher joining us there. Up